Hi, everyone. Today, I'm talking to Leslie Wardman. She's the founder of Ambiance Match, and she is a professional matchmaker. And I know a lot of you are curious about what is it like to work with a professional matchmaker. So Leslie is going to let us know. Thank you so much for being here. Sure. Happy to be here. Awesome. Okay. So I have a list of questions from my audience, but I'm curious myself as well, because I've never worked with a matchmaker. I do have a friend who has worked with one and she had a fantastic experience. She said that she went out with some really awesome guys. Um, She didn't meet her future husband, but she loved the experience. Oh, good. I love hearing that a lot. So you're based in near San Francisco or in San Francisco, right? Bay Area. Yeah, for the most part, mind you, I'm like a fourth generation LA native, you know, so I kind of bounced back and forth. And then for a while there, Chicago was our headquarters. So I'm pretty much all over the map. But yeah, San Francisco. Okay, but your clients are all over, right? They really are. Okay, so are you Skyping with them or Zoom calling? Do you ever go fly out to see them? Yeah, yeah, I do all of the above. One of our staff members, I couldn't make it, but one of our staff members had to fly in. Well, was in Santa Monica recently because they had to meet with somebody. And then typically it's these days for sure. It's Zoom, FaceTime, Skype. But once upon a time, I was running around. Yeah, so we I switched to this mode a few years ago. Because you've been doing this since the 90s, correct? 2002. Oh, 2002. Okay, 2002. Yeah. I mean, that's almost 20 years and things yeah, are yeah. different now, right? Because yeah, there's... Yeah dating apps now it the landscape has changed quite a bit I'd say (laughs) in 20 years it's been very interesting just the whole evolution uh seeing the difference huge difference between men and women you know they're like individual landscapes and men seem to be getting you know more sensitive honestly and they just came out with a harvard test saying that they are indeed more sensitive and they're just finally able to start you know easing into the mode because it used to be women were all sentimental and then all of a sudden i noticed this transition the pendulum swung to men signing on in droves you know right for the holidays and i was like what's going on here yeah i i mean i've seen a similar trend in that men are more sensitive or feminine these days and women are more masculine it's women are so capable today It's a new landscape to kind of maneuver through. And that's, I had a hard time with that when I was dating before I met my husband, because everyone's different. I learned how important good communication is because everyone's expectations are different. I mean, you probably help with this. Number one, for sure. That's a big part of your job. Yeah. Typically, I like to think that our clients have all their ducks in a row before they come to us. We do strive to get people that have done their work, you know, getting to know themselves. Communication is definitely number one. And I've been known to just say the littlest things. Like I had a guy call me one time said, I don't know why she's not talking to me. I told him to send her flowers and, you know, they got married. Amazing. You know? Anyway, for the first time in history, the majority of the population are single, and it's definitely attributed to all of these things added up. In the next few years, things will kind of temper into a nice mode where, you know, a lot of maybe wounded psyches are going to circle back around and get healthy and understand the complexities so they can move forward in the healthier mode because that is just monumental when it comes to merging your life with somebody else. Besides introducing people to Mm -hmm. each other, you, it sounds like you also coach them. Like you told that guy, give her some flowers. I mean, that's pretty basic. You know, I really don't like to put my name with coach in the same sentence necessarily. Again, typically our clients, you know, got their act together before they come to us. Our clients are in particular, but I'm flashing back right now to you know, times where I've had to tell women, you know, don't start picturing those white picket fences on the first date, please. It's just a first date. It's so easy for the mindset of, you know, the last million years or something to go into the mode of, you know, settling down when dating, you know, is a bit of a journey and you're not supposed to picture him as your husband, you know, immediately or anything like that. I don't mind it. I just really don't have time for it. I'm so busy bringing people together and stuff. And there's enough coaches out there to last a lifetime and then some. Yes. I imagine you're already dealing with a lot of expectations and emotions as it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So who are typically your clients? The clients that we take are typically busy entrepreneurs and then have gotten their 
corporate game or entrepreneurship, you know, happening. And then they found themselves in a place where, you know, they've gotten to enjoy that perhaps for a while, but then they're thinking, okay, you know, what next? And thirties is a good time, you know, for people to start thinking about finding a significant other. So that is probably our most popular age category. We have people coming to us the second time around, you know, divorce is no stranger to our society, but it makes me happy to be able to protect them because it's like landing on another planet from the way it was perhaps before they went into their marriage. You know, it's like landing on planet single and it's a you know whole lot of crazy out there. So uh, yeah, I like to be able to uh, protect them from things like the internet. <laughs> Dating apps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, is, what is this? <laughs> Do you ever turn people away? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like uh, tons and tons of people are coming in and I screen them personally they, there's like a very strong criterion that we put people through before we take them. Because again, you know, we like them to have done their work, know who they are and have everything going on. So they're in a stable place. So they're not bringing anything in that they shouldn't. We've got pretty good BS detectors in that department just to make sure we're bringing together a healthy relationship. And it's really paid off over the years because 99.9% of the marriages that we've gotten together are still married. Yeah, that totally makes sense because it doesn't matter. Like you can introduce someone to the perfect match or like a really great match. But if they're not ready to show up, I mean, that relationship's not going to work, right? Timing, timing is so huge. I like sometimes see like perfect couple, but the timing is just a little bit off. And I'm like, well, that sucks a little bit. It's just not meant to be obviously at the time. (laughs) We had this gentleman come to us and uh, he has an international company. He's probably the most eligible bachelor in this particular geography. And we were matching him and he was having a great time matching him with, you know, great ladies. And the whole time we're working with him, I was like, you have to meet this girl. She's uh, 90 minutes away. And he's like, oh no, keep it within a few zip codes, you know? And I was like, yeah, okay, you have companies all around the world, but okay, that's fine. I will. He signed on for one year. He had, you know, great dates, and but nothing developed in anything serious. You know why? He was not ready yet. Did I was wanting to connect them. He just wouldn't hear of it because she was too far down the road. Timing wasn't right. He needed to just get out there and decompress and kind of see what was going on and get his head back on his shoulders. A little. It was there, but it was in his favor to just get acclimated. So for a successful match, what are the top three things that you look for? I look for how somebody was raised. It's super huge. The whole family dynamics I take into consideration. There are people out there that haven't been born into the ideal family, but they've done the work. You know, they realize that that wasn't the way they wanted to be. Some people grow up and they emulate things that, you know, weren't necessarily favorable for life. And then other ones are just like, oh, Dear God, please, this is how I don't want to be. And they, you know, go a different direction and end up being exemplary people. And then timing again, you know, where you are, if you're ready, definitely factor in energy because to have two people sitting across the table and have that exchange and that balance. Like, I just know, I don't know who it is this week we have going out or was it last week, but I was like, oh, their energy is going to be so good together. I'm so excited. I love that you're intuitive that you can pick up on that as well. I'm sure you can attest that two people might like look great on paper, but you won't know until you meet them in person. Unbelievable. If it's going to be Absolutely. a match, right? Absolutely. What is your success rate and how do you measure that success? There's a few different ways to look at that. And I know it's not easy as a matchmaker to be able to measure success necessarily because I've gone into restaurants and the owner came up, oh, your couple was in here celebrating their anniversary. And I was like, they got married, you know, like I didn't even know and stuff. So, you know, once people meet and they fall in love, it's like, you know, maybe see ya. They don't necessarily send you cards and flowers. Well, they do sometimes, you know, it's really sweet. Let me put this out there. 90% of first matches lead to second ones. My favorite one is just the marriages staying together that we put together. Yeah. First dates leading to second ones, marriages staying together. Other than that, it's hard to track. It makes me think of, I used to um, photograph weddings for a living for 15 years and We would have to check because sometimes we would want to follow up and say, like, send a Christmas card or something. Mm -hmm. But I realized I have to check if they're still together before before I send 
a Christmas card. That's super sad. Because these days it's, I mean, the divorce rate's higher. How much does it cost to hire a matchmaker? It can go anywhere from free to up near hundred grand. Does it depend on how much time that you spend working with them or how many matches? And geography, mostly. We try to cater and curtail them to people's needs. If I take somebody that, you know, wants an international search, that's um, going to be some work. And I have an amazing team, but we've had clients that come to us that want, they want to meet with me every two weeks, you know, just to catch up and talk about like how things are going, but not everybody, you know, is like that. A lot of people just want their entry level local membership, which is 25,000. And we match them up once, twice a month, 90% of the first matches lead to second ones. That's pretty good for first dates. And another great thing is that the people that do come to us, this is huge. They're serious about finding a significant other. The neuroscience that goes behind this, you know, people that are on the internet ends up training their brain to look at it like, you know, McDonald's or something. It's just not taken seriously. But if people are investing in this process, they are taking it serious as opposed to just hanging out at, you know, happy hour or a swipe place where last I checked on the most popular one in the world, like 25% of the profiles aren't even real. I heard so many nightmare stories about people just getting catfished and scammed. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of sifting that has to happen. I usually tell people if they're on the apps, like not every date or person's going to be great. You kind of have to, I mean, that comes with being on it, that you you're going to encounter some people who don't like what well, you don't like the way they talk to you, you know, all that stuff. So I'm guessing the people who hire you just don't even want to deal with that at all. No way. The and vetting. then uh, the vetting is priceless, but um, it's nice to have that screening out because so many people use old pictures. Okay. Besides that. And then now everybody's treating them with oh, all these new apps that make them look like this and that and the other. And I was talking to this 30 year old guy a couple of days ago and he was just like, it's getting out of control, Leslie. And I was like, yeah, I can imagine. So yeah, we make sure nobody pulls any wool or, you know, in that department, we just authenticate people and just make sure everything's going to line up. I have been doing this so long and I used to put all our couples up on the wall and I would sit there and philosophize and go, what did I do right to make these people become significant others? As far as looks go, there's like a string of continuity. You know, they like look good together. It's a big deal because you know why it ups the odds of chemistry and we all know how important that is, huh? Yeah. (laughs) So when you say look good together, is that usually if you'll match like an eight with an eight? Is it like that or is it more energetic? That too. And how they take care of themselves and how much, you know, effort they put into presenting and, you know, height and, you know, all these kind of things. Do people ever have unrealistic expectations? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Totally. They do. So I'm sitting there thinking, because I have to like bring in the whole big picture of how long I've been doing this. And it seems like, They don't as much anymore. We're raising the bar all the time. Like I said, our clients have a pretty realistic grasp on, you know, who they are and who they want. And it just kind of balances. Haven't, hasn't really been an issue that much in our world, you know, because if they do, I won't take them as a client. It's that simple because I've learned the hard way. I used to think I could match everybody no matter what. No, I retired my matchmaking cape probably, I don't know, five, seven years ago and realized I can't help everybody. Could you share an example of something ridiculous that someone asked for? Maybe you, maybe you turn this client away, but what is something that was completely ridiculous? Probably uh, age. And I'm not judging anybody about anything necessarily but sometimes people can get a little carried away in the age department. I get that, you know, a lot of people are going to the gym and a lot of people are getting the Botox and, you know, doing stuff and they're pleased with themselves. So uh, staying in shape and, uh, and then all of a sudden though, they uh, start thinking a little bit extreme as far as expectations and stuff. I uh, won't say it's not okay for, you know, somebody to, you know, want to marry somebody 20 years younger and 
speaking of pendulum swinging, women are the new, you know, cradle robbers, it seems like no judgment there at all. Typically, you know, five to 10 years one way or the other, because it's not as easy to match somebody if they want to, you know, shoot in one direction, like younger, you know, 20 years, because it's just not as ordinary in the matchmaking realm. If somebody is thinking in a way that maybe isn't in their best interest, I will talk to them just like I'm talking to you right now. And I'll let them know there's a lot of great people within, you know, a certain age range that are as healthy and, you know, genetically blessed and, you know, take care of themselves as they are. I think just staying open to, that's what I learned before I met my husband. I got that piece of advice from someone who was married. She said, you know, to create the relationship of your dreams. Like you also have to stay open. I wasn't staying open. I would be very (laughs) judgmental. Like, oh no, I don't like that type of guy when I haven't even given him a fair chance. I feel like when that shifted, that opened up a lot for me because clearly the guys that I was choosing, my pattern was not working. Mm -hmm. So I made logic. I just had to be open and start choosing differently. (laughs) Well, was it, did you, start choosing differently? Or did you just release all expectations and let the universe kind of take over and guide you more instead of trying to be in, you know, the steering wheel? Both, both with me, I did have some unhealthy patterns that I had to stop, which was uh, choosing emotionally unavailable men. Uh, That of course is not going to work. So I'm like, I need to stop doing this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So as soon as I did that, that actually fixed a lot. And then I, I mean, I love to be in control. Like I'm a businesswoman, so it, mm-hmm. I constantly have to remind myself in that in this area of my life, my personal life, my romantic life, I need to let go of some control. <laughs> I'm still learning. I mean, we've I've been with my okay. husband for almost six years, but I'm still learning that I need to and have to remind myself. Like the self awareness is there, but I'm just like, oh, don't do that. <laughs> oh. Don't do that. Too. <laughs> oh, thank God you learned. Yeah. Constantly learning, forever. <clears throat> Absolutely. What is in your contract? Can you guarantee a match? Mm, Excellent question. Oh, yeah, definitely. Or I wouldn't take them as a client or, you know, if hell froze over something, I would refund them if something was like hideous. We're not that matchmaker. We're really easy going. We want it to be fun and enjoyable. And from the minute we start the interview, it's fun because they get the impression that we're there, you know, to, you know, support them and stuff like that. By the time they get to the agreement part, they've been screened, you know, so thoroughly that I know that I'm going to be able to match them. We definitely guarantee matches. What we don't guarantee is marriage. Um, We don't guarantee love necessarily because yes, it's still the biggest mystery of all time, but I do take in like all these things as much as possible to encourage the possibilities thereof. That is realistic. You can't force love. I mean, that would be weird to like promise marriage. (laughs) Well, you know, there are those arranged marriages out there still. There are. And some of them you know what I've learned from, I learned it from a therapist about shared purpose, that mm-hmm. that's important mm-hmm. between a couple. And I realized that's why those arranged marriages, a lot of them work because the people are on the same page of what is the purpose of us getting married. Uh, I love that. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a big like aha for me. Um, and she said it was actually the purpose is more important more important than compatibility. Compatibility is important as well. But if, if you're, the purpose is off, that relationship's not going to work. That's the cool thing about an arranged marriage. And because you have that straight out the gate, well, you have that platform immediately. You know that, you know, that's your goal and you're going to be a partner with this person. But you don't get that in societies where there aren't arranged marriages. And you have to kind of navigate to the point. No, once you've established yourself as a couple, then you've got to like use that. As a whole in the world, we have clients that are coming from arranged marriage countries, you know, and when I interview them or my directors interview them, we ask a lot of questions about family, their parents, they're still married and they were arranged marriages. And of course they're not perfect, but it works and the kids are happy about it. If you have parents that are, have stayed together and they have a reasonable respect of one another and it's working what kids going to argue with that. But a lot of these, the new generation, those range of marriages aren't working. The kids are 
moving away from home, leaving their countries of origin. So we had clients, like I said, you know, from India and all over, and they just said it's not working anymore. I guess the kids are just opening up their minds and they're getting more of a mind of their own. And I'm enjoying that. In today's world with online dating, Mm -hmm. where do you source possible matches from and how do you screen them? Most people come to us. We are blessed because we have been doing it, you know, for quite some time. So we have established, you know, a reputation, the screening process. They first do an application. It's like a mini me version. And then if that looks promising, then they'll get sent another pretty hefty questionnaire about everything from tattoos to, you know, if they're 420 friendly plant medicines. Oh, no. That's a thing. That's a thing. No, it's totally a thing. I have a beautiful young lady. She just got back from Peru and she's like, I probably wouldn't be matched with somebody, right? You know, unless they were into that because it's a big part of her life. Trust me, I was just in the Amazon, Peru, the jungle with no Wi-Fi for two weeks. And the day I came out of the jungle was March 15th, 2020. And all of a sudden they're talking about some pandemic and I had to haul ass to Lima, Peru to be able to get back to the, you know, the States in time. It was kind of crazy. Did you do plant medicine when you were there? Ayahuasca. How was it? Plant medicine is, of course, a really super growing uh, area for people to do soul searching. And uh, you know how big I am on that. So if people can get to know themselves and get healed from, you know, childhood traumas, and we all have them, you know, whether they be little ones or big ones, highly recommend it. It was amazing. And I will probably end up doing it again. You just have to make sure you've got like a really good space around you. And it was just so beautiful. I'm curious about it. I'm I'm a little scared to do it. I just want to make sure I'm in a good space before I... You'll be fine. I can tell you right now. Thank you. (laughs) Once upon a time, how women, you know, would, they were used to playing hard to get in those days, like are so long gone. And like, I, we were talking earlier about people coming out of long marriages and a lot of them still have that mentality. And I've taken, you know, women or talked to women that want to be clients and they're gorgeous, you know, and they have everything going for them. And they think though, that guys are going to be lined up down the street, you know, and around the corner. And it's just not those days. It just doesn't work. And when men need to put in the energy, it's just, it's just not, you know, so old school anymore. Yes. Guys still like to chase and stuff. To, and to some degree, you know, there, that can be there, but you know, women need to put energy into a relationship, just to have that balance and stuff. I hate making these blanket comments and general is, you know, generalizing, but uh, I'm just thinking of all the women that, you know, go into our database and they think like they're going to get matched and they might not. There's a lot of women in there and they have a lot going for them and they're beautiful. And it's really helpful to actually have a proactive matchmaker, you know, take you, figure you out, you know, who you are and what you want and where you've been and where you want to go. You could meet them in the cheese section of the grocery store. Sure, maybe, but take advantage of the time. Like a great matchmaker is like a heat seeking missile for what you want. So why not take it, you know, advantage of that? Well, I imagine that even if they don't meet their future spouse, being matched and going on dates with good people Mm -hmm. is really refreshing because I I do think some people get burned out or they lose hope, you know, doing the online dating. That's a very good point. And it keeps a lifted spirit. And I'm just thinking of a, a, a guy I just got into a significant other relationship and the girl I matched him with was in our database. It was really random. She was cool. We all liked her. She was just like a cool kind of spunky, fun, smart And they ended up clicking. It was his second match. And he's so happy now. His daughter's emailing us. He put his daughter into our uh, database (laughs) because she's never seen him so happy. And do you, I mean, you don't have pictures online or anything, do you? Uh, Like where your clients can see? No, they want their privacy. Yeah, Yeah, no. Okay, that's right. Yeah, totally. We protect their privacy. What do people request the most? Give me an example. Like when they come in, what's, what do you hear most? Like when you ask, like, what are you looking for? What do people say? A lot of people say partner in crime, you know, I don't know, but they want somebody to be that person. As far as like little kind of drop down bar request, education, you know, is something that we flaunt. It's a thing with a lot of people, you know, there's something to be said, but it's not necessarily Ivy league. You can get it maybe traveling after all of those kind of things are done and we get down to the brass tacks of character. 
they want somebody that's authentic and fun and nice and kind and just those things that you would expect just uh, pretty basic and the last question I have is what is a good mindset to have when seeking to work with a matchmaker patience (laughs) because <laughs> you know I mean we've like I gave a couple examples one we had to renew his agreement and you know he found his love second match on his going into a second year but it doesn't always happen that way and a lot of people get anxiety I know some matchmakers they don't guarantee their first match till maybe three months down the road or maybe six months or something and to me that just seems a little bit uh, much But we let them know, you know, especially like, you know, before the weekend, we'll tell them, you know, we have this idea in mind for you, but he went on hold already with somebody or this other person's traveling or, you know, what's going on. Rest assured, uh, we have their best interest at hand and we're working on their next match. Don't uh, get down about being alone because there's nothing wrong with that. It's a great time to work on yourself. And one of my favorite quotes by Sir Francis Sartre, if you're lonely when you're by yourself, then you're in bad company. And you shouldn't be in the mode where you feel like you need to have somebody. It's not healthy, you know? Feel good about yourself. It's the best time to meet somebody when you're, uh, you know, got it together on the inside and the outside. So if people want to hire you or check you out, you and Mm -hmm. your company, where can they find you? Our website is the go-to and it's ambiancematchmaking.com. Yeah, you can fill out a little application and start the process and you never know. Just bring your good energy and we'll see. Good energy. I always talk about that. That was my goal when I fi- it finally clicked for me during, when I was dating. Like, I just want to feel good. I don't, I'm not trying to like force a result because I was trying to do that for a long time and no one responds well to that, even if you try to play it cool. I'm putting too much pressure on this. So my goal was always to feel good. Like I'm not trying to make this work. I'm not trying to force that. I just want to feel good. And when you feel good, it doesn't really matter what the result looks like as much. Like if you feel good, you feel good. And then you attract more good stuff. Guys sense that a mile away and they, you know, run for the hills that can, you know, mar a man for like ever almost. So. Yes. I learned yeah. this because I scared a lot of guys away for many years and I could feel it. They could feel my anxiety. You know, I don't blame them because I've mm-hmm. had it done to me and it doesn't, it doesn't feel good. It is a two-way street for sure. It's not just women. Guys can do it too. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. And I've had a, a lot of single guys on my podcast and a lot of them say, when I ask like, what attracts you? Mm -hmm. to someone. And a lot of them say it's their energy. I dabble into spirituality too. So I feel like when you could tap into that, it just doesn't matter how good someone is on paper, if their energy is off, it's right. Uh, It's it's such a big component of it. I typically say insecurity is the root of all evil when it comes to relationships, you know, so just uh, loving yourself before thinking about loving somebody else is so important. Well, thank you so much for coming on and thank you for being patient through our um, connectivity issues. (laughs) Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Well, take care. Nice meeting you.